previously on the Death Saving Bros podcast. You are left alone in the front lobby. On four gurneys are dead students. Milo, you were talking to Donnie on our way over here, right? I just kicked the door open and going <laughs> to where Donnie is. All right, good. We'll, we'll wait out here. <laughs> Milo, you were going through the papers behind the front desk. You notice the name Winona. Winona is in here. So she's been admitted here this whole time. So she's a clone, too. I'm, I'm going to go check out room 206 real quick. When you get there, it is an empty bed. There is a medical chart. The only person that is checking on her was Dean Livia. And are any of those checks during the time she was, like, with one of us? Yes. You hear Dean Tyson call out to you and say, I thought I told you to wait out in the lobby. You can see a whole congregation of nurses and doctors down the hall. I think we deserve some answers. Well, why are there two Dean Livias? Dean Livia is with the group. You see her turn. (laughs) We're dead. And... She walks up to you all and says, I want you to tell me what it is that you expect of me. I'm confused. You see Dixon's head pop around the far side of the hallway. Dixon, thanks for joining us. I just spilled everything that we, we, we've <laughs> known. And Professor Kane and Coach Rolta walk in. Dean Livia says, what's going on with this little project of yours that you've been doing? Ever since you started, the students have basically been sick. I ran a surge experiment with four ancient dragon scales. And she says, now that I knew how to counteract the ancient dragon scale dust, I've just cured the first of many. Dean Tyson says, Fackham, we should put you back in your office pending further investigation. Maybe you should just Does anybody want to see the secret fucking lab? I'll take them there. Manny, we will follow up on your claims, but for now, go back. That seems pretty important. (laughs) Why don't we head back to our room? I would like to make sure we barricade the fuck out of our doors. (laughs) You make it through the night. Except for Manny. You have a terrible nightmare. Oh, man. Welcome to another episode of the Death Saving Bros Podcast. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Paul Camper. With me today, I have Ben Renfro. Hey guys, just want to let everybody know that my uh, cock is unholstered and ready to blow. Die. (laughs) I was going to say that. Uh, Brad Richards. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) You took it. I was going to tell him to die. I'm so tired of these. It's ruining our image. Our image. (laughs) That's what that that's tips what it over and ruins the 121 image. 121 episodes in. That's, that's the straw that broke the camel's back, and I'll <laughs> tell you, it's been going on for too damn long. Just let it go. Matt Smith. What are magical skillets made of? Oh, cr- Cast iron. Yeah, mm. you fuck. <laughs> I hate you. I love you. <laughs> I thought you said what are magical skittles made of, and I'm like, what does cast iron have to do with a skittle? The but, rainbow, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but now he said skillet, which... That makes so much more sense now. They go hand in hand with my lucky charms. They're magically <laughs> delicious. Sorry. And the last host with us today is Brad Renfro. What did the horse say when he tripped? I'm yeah. about to blow my load. <laughs> <laughs> my God. I've <laughs> fallen and I can't giddy up. Uh. I don't know which one of you two fucks was worse, but... Oh, definitely Brad's. No offense, Brad. Normally I love yours, but Matt's, Matt's got me. Brad was definitely worse than Matt. What the fuck are you talking about over? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even say shit for your intro. <laughs> I just pissed on all of you guys, but like, no, I actually just pissed on Paul. I'm so. Do you, Is that a what did the horse? Yet? What did the horse say when he fell in? I blew my load. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad. Gotta Not take a load off, you know? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> Scott would be proud. <laughs> Can't wait to tell him. I'm not proud at all. Well, we invite all of you listeners to take a load off as you kick back and begin listening to this, our fifth edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast, of which this is episode 21. <laughs> we invite all you listeners to blow your load as you listen to us. <laughs> is that what you just said? <laughs> 
I blanked out for a second. Is that what you just said? No. <laughs> No, he said, I invite all you listeners to take a load off, and it just came. Oh, okay. It came. I would be honored <laughs> if mean, he took a load off to us. I was going to say, if you'd like just to harmonize real quick, like I mean, we'll do a quick take for you. I think there's some of that in the Patreon content. You can definitely... <laughs> Well, Brad does bring up a good point. We do have quite a bit of extra content over on Patreon, and we invite you to join us if you'd like to hear more of our show. We have bloopers, extra episodes, and conversational recaps. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and recap what happened last time so that we can get into our next episode. Our student adventurers went over to the infirmary, and they were doing so because... They had been spotted in the hallway after their fight with a bunch of demons by Dean Tyson and Coach Rolta. Coach Rolta and Dean Tyson said, hey, you look like you're in rough shape. Let's take you over to the infirmary, make sure that you're all good. And then we're also going to look into these allegations of those demons weren't your fault. They were actually Professor Fackham Kane's fault. Once they arrived at the infirmary, there were dead students. Dean Tyson said, wait, let me go see what's going on. Instead of waiting in the lobby, like they were told, our adventurers Milo, Manny, Thad, and Dixon decided to go looking around the hospital. Milo looked behind the front desk and realized that Winona, uh, Manny's crush, is actually supposed to be in the infirmary, so they went to her room, except for Dixon, who went to go talk to Donnie. Dixon and Donnie basically just caught up and... Dixon told Donnie to lie low, and then the other three went to Monona's room and discovered that she wasn't there. Even though there was a medical record sheet saying that Dean Livia had been giving Winona regular checkups, even during the time when Winona was found by our adventurers in the underground secret lab, and when she disappeared on the staircase, and then there was a subsequent demon fight. So our student adventurers were clearly very confused and decided to just have it out and say, we don't know what's going on. Here's all the things that have been happening to us. And they said that in front of Professor Kane, Dean Tyson, Dean Livia and Coach Rolta. And Dean Livia accused Professor Kane of being the one behind all of this. And she said that based on the fact that Professor Kane had been running experiments on new types of surges with ancient dragon scales, she was able to figure out a cure. And supposedly now all of the students are on the mend or in the process of being cured. And Professor Kane is under investigation for uh, malfeasance, we'll say. Our adventurers decided to wash their hands of further investigation for the night, and they went back to their room, barricaded themselves in, and got a long rest. Except... Without... Oh, wait, yeah. Hold on. I, I, Paul's right. We didn't ask for extra credit for curing the school disease. <laughs> yeah, we should get some, <laughs> but Paul, that's the, that's a huge thing that I missed out in the uh, in the recap for like the Patreon and stuff like that. Um, extra credit. I think for once, Manny's like having a dream or something's happening to me where <laughs> I don't get the long rest, but everybody else does. Is that what MLK stands for? Is Manny LeQuaid? It's McQuaid, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not French. <laughs> um, yes. So as Ben said, Manny, everybody else got a long rest except for Manny. Manny had some terrible nightmares of Winona being tortured. In the morning, everybody wakes up. I'm assuming you wake up anyways. Uh, and Manny, you did not get any benefits of a long rest. Can you please describe to me in detail the torture that I saw in my dream? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in your dream, you were walking along the secret hallway underneath the Arkshine. You had just used the uh, window patch to go through the secret door in the wall beneath the pipes and you're walking along the hall walking, walking, walking and off in the distance you can see the firelit lab and you can hear the screams of Winona No! No, don't touch me! No, please, don't don't hurt me! No! And suddenly the hallway shortens and you're walking through the doorway into the lab and you can see shadowy figures 
with needles poking into Winona's arms, drawing blood, and you can see her hair standing on end like it has static electricity, and her veins are popping out of her skin, and they're black with ichor and poison, and she looks at you and says, Manny, you weren't here to help me. You weren't here to help me. And suddenly you are falling as her voice echoes around, You weren't there to help me. You weren't there to help me. And you fall into your bed and wake up in a cold sweat. What a bad dream. <clears throat> cool. Thank you <laughs> for, for describing it. You're welcome. And that is why you do not get any sort of health reset. You have not regained your spell slots. And you can now potentially have a level of exhaustion. Good. What is uh what does the level of exhaustion do to me, Paul? So if you do not get rest, you will wind up gaining one level of exhaustion and these compound, but the first level of exhaustion would be disadvantage on all ability checks. Good. You're not there yet, but that is something that I wanted to share with you, the player. Alright, that's uh that's great to know. That's um, pretty neat. Make sure, you know, tomorrow night I take my melatonin so I could get a good night's sleep. Sleep through the bad dreams. So, actually, we'll go ahead and pick it up from there. You have just woken up in a cold sweat. Your roommates are still asleep, but you can see the beginnings of dawn coming through your dorm window. <laughs> I mean... I'm not going to be an ass and wake everybody else up yet, but I guess since... It's not uh, quite time to tip the bunk bed. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, since I have not been able to sleep, I'm going to try to distract myself to get my mind off of the bad dreams of torture of Winona that I had. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out uh, a book that I can start skimming through so that... Again, just to like give everybody else some time to sleep, you know, everything else. So I'm going to pull out one of the books that I got from the magical desk or that I checked out. And I'm going to start skimming it, looking for any bits of helpful information I may find, including... Well, I think the, I think the book that I'm... Have I read The Rise and Desolation of the Wizarding Community Morinbell yet? No, because you just got it yesterday. You you did piece through it and try to find a picture with the uh, talisman symbol on it. Oh no, that was the uh, that was a different book. I got a lot. Yeah, that was a different book called like the Eyes and Images of Ralvaria. Right. So let the me Eyes and Images really. <laughs> let, let me let me skim the Rise and Desolation of the Wizarding Community Morimbel. Okay. And yeah, that's what I'm going to do for a little bit until it's time to, you know, flip the beds. Okay. So you begin perusing that book and the sun is now rising and you realize that it's time to get up for the day. Why don't you go ahead and roll me a D20 to see just how far you get through the book. Yeah, so uh, maybe the exhaustion is playing in and I'm not able to read very uh, efficiently because I rolled a one. <laughs> it's not his fault he can't read. So that dice gets uh, moved out of this container right now and will not be used uh, until the other dice does poorly. Okay. Yeah, you get very little done in reading that book. All right. So fuck it. Recognizing that I, I can't really concentrate and focus on the reading, I, I set the book down. Notice that the sun's coming up, so I uh, climb out of bed in whatever fashion I must do with the way we barricaded it and like barricaded the bunks up against the bed. So if I have to, you know, climb over Milo on the top. Oh, you're on the top bunk too, aren't you, Milo? Yeah, bro. And if we put the beds next to each other, are we sleeping that close to, to, oh my goodness. All right, well, if I somehow have to climb over Milo to get off the bunks. We don't share a bunk. Yeah, but we move the beds together. What? In, in an effort to barricade the door, we put... Definitely oh, put that and Manfred's bed right up <laughs> against the door for like the most weight. And if we kind of moved your guys' bed up against ours, we could potentially be at same bunk level here. Well, in that case, I potentially died in my sleep when you rolled over. Just like, yeah, I'm sleeping good. My trunk wraps around your neck and just, 
No, I was not saying that you literally murdered me in your sleep. I, know, I you're said saying when the you weight, rolled over. The weight of me, yeah. But you're going, do you, you have some repressed feelings about Milo that we are going to discover this episode. <laughs> All right, so I climb over Milo and out of bed. I sleep in my boxers. Oh, why is that? <laughs> why, why was that needed? <laughs> what is that add to, to, this, to this moment? <laughs> I just told you, I'm going to... This is going to be an episode about Manny and Milo's relationship. I hope not, <laughs> because that is not something I'm ready to explore. <laughs> <laughs> I need a therapist. Um, oh, but he is ready to explore you. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, girl, what that trunk do? All right. I climb yeah. out of bed. I, I walk over to the blinds, throw them bitches open. So sunlight beams into the room. Now it's time to do the morning uh, flipping of the beds. I want to be off the beds before the flipping. Ooh, ooh, I want to do some flipping. Uh, I'm not sure if you're <laughs> awake yet. <laughs> the, the, you opened the blinds, the light woke me up. All right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm groggy, running off, no sleep. I'm not paying any attention to you. I'm just going to walk over, and the first thing I do is I start to drag uh, the, the bunk of Milo and Dixon back away from my bunk that that is still sleeping on. Uh, so I just, I, I literally am just dragging to move them away to give me room to flip, well, really both beds, right? Because if I flip the one, there's not going to be room. So I pull theirs back, and then I just push it over to topple it. And then uh, after that, would like to walk over to uh, Thad in the bed. And I would also just like to grab the top of the bed and pull it back towards me so that it falls, spilling Thad out of the bed as well. Onto your feet. No, in Crushing theory, him. <laughs> with what he just said, he toppled the he he scooted the one bunk back and toppled it over. Me being on the top bunk, I would have landed right there, and then he rolled that off directly onto me, <laughs> probably killing me. Uh, let's see, how much do I weigh? Ah, uh, like six hundred pounds. And I am a small, small kender. <laughs> Could Milo uh, withstand six hundred pounds just crashing onto his body? Milo, give me a dexterity saving throw. Only if I'm expecting it. I'm just going to click the... You know, no, my computer's been a piece this week. Five. <laughs> Ega. How much damage does a especially heavy turtle deal? Uh, so... Based on advice online... <laughs> bad. Roll uh, 2d6 to see how much damage you deal to Milo. Well, he takes eight damage. The, this this comes from the, the exhaustion that I'm feeling. I I didn't think through how I was toppling you guys. I'm immediately so if, awake. If I'm laying on my back in my shell and then I get toppled, do I topple onto my front or am I still on my back? <laughs> That's up to you. I mean, how, how extreme is the angle that I'm... It's, when the bunk is pushed, is it enough to make me flip over? Matt, I'm going to tell you something. If you topple onto your back and I'm stuck, things are going to I mean, you're get done. Dra- things yeah. are going to get drastic. <laughs> I'm, go- I- I'm going to respond to being awoken to being crushed. So just, and I'm just, not going to be able to help you. <laughs> so, so just, if you have a choice, I would land on your front and just get up. <laughs> I mean, I guess if it flips me, I will extend all my limbs out. And do a push-up. Nice. (laughs) (gasps) Did all this wake Dixon up or is... (laughs) No. All right. Then what I would like to do is I would like to twoot my my, my snout, similar to SpongeBob's bed alarm. That's not a toot. Huh? That's not a toot. That's a plomp. It's it's a twoot. That's a plomp, though. (laughs) Yeah, it's closer to a plomp. All right, then I would like to plop... No, no, don't, don't plop on them. Plop. Oh, what do you guys say? <laughs> Spell it out for me. <laughs> I, I want to make sure I'm using the same word. <laughs> you're, you're not. Plop. P W. Is that how you? That's not what you said. I said plop. You said plop. I said plop. You did say plop, not plop. Plop. I'm, pl- I'm plopping. No, you're plomping. Plomping. Now you are. Yeah, you're plomping, <laughs> not plomping. 
This guy doesn't know the definition of plop and plop. God, you gotta get your personification back. I'm asking you guys for the definition and spelling so I can use it correctly. This is a learning moment. Just learn learn on your own Just time. learn you better. You, okay, you plopped right on him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make the SpongeBob bell alarm sound. <laughs> <laughs> right into his ear to wake him up. <laughs> I'm gonna wake up and swing a hand axe at him. <laughs> That's fine. I have it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the hit. You're damn right. Why is the first thing we do after a long rest is to make sure that all of our HPs aren't perfect? Can I do like a dexterity saving throw to see if I dodge? <laughs> uh, he can do it with disadvantage. He just woke up. Ha. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but you're exhausted. Yeah, I'm. I'm s- slow reflexes. Uh, I haven't I haven't implemented the level of exhaustion yet. It doesn't matter. Natural 20. The 24 hit you. Uh-huh. It sure does. Yeah, yeah. That's with disadvantage. My yeah, God. I rolled a 17 Sweet. and a 19. My hand axe has paralyzed you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I can catch up on some sleep. So can I, uh, can I imbue it with a crimson right just for... I'm just fucking with you. I'm not doing that. 10. 6 and 4. I am... You swung hard. (laughs) It's the morning. All right, guys. I very well could die this episode if we encounter anything that causes damage. All right. Cool. Fuck y'all. So, yeah, everybody's awake. Uh, Morning, guys. How would everybody sleep? Because I didn't. (laughs) About as... I slept pretty well. I woke up not so great. I woke up as well as you slept, but I slept pretty well. (sighs) Yeah. That was genuine. Fuck you, Dixon. I'm sorry. That hurt. We go through this every morning. Uh, yeah, sometimes should, you I win, should, sometimes you lose. I should have been. I should have knew what was coming. <laughs> Good swing this morning. Really caught me. Connected well. All right. Well, it sounds like everybody slept except for me. I didn't hear anybody try to rattle the door. I don't think so. Hey, Manny, yeah. why didn't you sleep? Ah, uh, just bad dreams. Yeah, we don't. We don't need to get into it. But just rough night. What are you holding out on your team? Why would you withheld information? Was it the pirate cross dream again <laughs> where you ruined the big game? <laughs> that wasn't a dream. That that happened. It's a crystal clear memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I just wanted you to remember it. Ah, uh, uh, you jerk. <laughs> God, I'm good with that What one. the headlines don't n- never come back to is how good of a season we had and how like <laughs> I helped to get us to the big game as well as it did, but... But uh, yeah, just... guys, if you haven't noticed, we did survive being barricaded in all night, so things seem okay. Um, you got us to the good game, and yet you couldn't close. <laughs> Where does that happen before? I just, <laughs> looking at that, <laughs> for, well, it, 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 okay, guys, listen, well, I look at that, and my, my eyes just go down, you know, embarrassed, look, I, I know, I know a lot came out e- yesterday, right? We said some things, and you know, cats out of the bag, right? I did it. I did not close with Winona, but again, hearing that she could have been a clone or some sort, or maybe there's more going on here. I don't know. So you were trying to close with a clone, clone or not, doesn't matter. Uh, cloner didn't close. <laughs> Look, cloner. I barely know her. I got a, such a cloner right for now. for the team. <laughs> I won't. I won't do that again. I'm gonna be be truthfully honest with you guys in my sex affairs. Because that's what you guys want to hear, right? It's, it sounds like everybody everybody wants to know what's actually going on. So I don't really care. I'm not mad. I was never uh, mad. I I'm know, just I know disappointed. You, you didn't have to say it, but I could really go for a cup of cup of Joe and coffee or something to, to help wake me up. I'm I'm pretty tired today, guys. Um, so let's go do that. Aren't you an alchemist? Don't you just like make coffee? You're right. I just chug my first elixir of the morning. <laughs> what does it randomly do? Um, it's been it's been a minute. Hold on, let me roll. It's the enlargement one. Damn it! <laughs> Be like, you're right. yeah, and this is you know you're right. As an alchemist, I you know pretty good at brewing my own stuff, my own elixirs. I think I have one that wakes me up a little bit. 
Hiya. And, and it's a bang energy. Where's the sponsorship? And as he's pulling out and slamming his coffee, it's just like I'm turning around and being like, you can make your own coffee. And I'm like p- going into my pocket to pull out like a bag of coffee that he can make. Well, I uh, I blindly just, you know, pulled out my first elixir, which, as we know, is uh, random. That gets that I that I brew every night. <laughs> It's like I just put on like a pot of like <laughs> pot of coffee. Like in the night, I just like start brewing an elixir. I'm like, I have no idea what this is gonna do in the fucking morning, but I'm gonna act like I know what it does. Um, and I rolled a three, which gives me a uh, plus one to my AC for an hour. So I don't know how helpful that is. But as part of being level nine, one of the things that happens is whenever somebody takes one of my elixirs, they get two d six plus my intelligent modifier of temporary hit points. So fuck yeah. Hey, hey. It sounds like you took that and it actually worked like a cup of coffee. Like, it sounds like you... Yeah, you, I, you feel, right. I feel better, you know. Like I, you I just more, got hit by a hand axe, but, you know, I'm I'm feeling alive. <laughs> like, you have more HPs and one to AC. Like, you just... Yeah, he's not exhausted anymore, right? <laughs> not quite, but... So, let me roll the 2d6 plus my intelligent modifier for some temporary hit points, because I'm starting the day at 35. <laughs> um... Not not a great hit point spot to be in. DM takes a note, 35. <laughs> All right, so that's a four. And Refreshed a two, so in your six, zone. Plus my intelligent modifier is 10 temporary hit points. So that's the hand axes back. I feel better. <laughs> how do you, so temporary hit points, how long do they last for? Temporarily. Yeah, that makes sense. But like, <laughs> unless there's something that, is specific like a time limit i'm pretty sure they will go until your next short or long rest or until they're depleted it's essentially just like adding 10 hp yes but you will subtract from the temporary hit points before you subtract from your normal hit points okay cool so yeah that actually that actually worked well for me (laughs) see i told you i uh uh you know thank goodness that brew worked this morning um yeah feel feeling better um Thanks for calling me out, Milo. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all. Why don't you scooch over just a bit? Because I got to sit down and I need to share with you some quick notes. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm your DM. And right now, I'm doing the mid-roll. First, I am putting out a call to arms for all of our listeners. If there's an aspect of our show that you'd like to know more about, please let us know by reaching out on social media at Death Saving Bros. Right now, I am looking for topics that I can write a small article about to help expand the lore of the world of Ralvaria. So far, we've posted info from our first campaign, on the history of the Rye Inn in Ryford, and the background of Chadley and Taylor, who are two characters from that first campaign. For this Arkshine campaign, we've posted rules that we homebrewed for our Pyrocross sport and for the Magical Focus role. If there's anything that you'd like to learn about, let us know. Something new, something exciting. All of those articles, new and past, have been and will be posted on our Patreon at patreon.com slash deathsavingbros, which you can access for as little as $2. In addition to the articles that we've been talking about, we also have over 150 additional audio entries that include bloopers, pre-show banter, and extra episodes. Not to mention that we make exclusive merchandise for those who support us at the $25 tier for at least three months. The last chance to qualify for that, by the way, will be April 31st, and that will get you into the running for our summer fulfillment of 2024. So, if you're interested in some Death Saving Bros swag, now is the perfect time to join. As for those of you who are already patrons of the show, it's my pleasure every episode to recognize you. Those who have joined our Patreon at the $5 tier get a shout out at the end of the show, but the following individuals have pledged to support us financially at the $10 tier or higher, so they get their supporter shout out right now. Ryan Cushman, Jean L. Jackson, 
and Gavin Knox. Thank you all for your support. And with all of that said, I'm going to get up and get going, because I have kept you from the Arkshine mystery long enough. Without further ado, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. And at that point, a knock comes at the door. Throw a hand axe at it. The hand axe goes wheeling through the air and sticks in the wood right next to the other one from a few days ago. <laughs> yeah, that's where my other hand axe went. I want to go pull him out of the door. I had did, they, did they leave like a hole in the door so when you pull it out, you could look through it like a like a like one of those peepholes or whatever they are? So you that's could see exactly what it's called. Yeah, so that you could see what who it is <laughs> knocking by chance. Dungeon Master did my axes leave a no hole. I would like to think that when I hear a knock, I, I draw weapons. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, no, I don't do that. We did just barricade the door for safety, and now someone's trying to get in, so be cautious enough. So, so, we usually get a knock on the door every morning from our freaking neighbor, whatever her name is. Uh, hmm. Really interested in our academic careers. Yeah, for some somebody reason. that's just like very committed to making sure we show up to class, even though we're not in her study group. She's just <laughs> like, hey. Class is starting soon. You guys are gonna miss it. And like Who is she it? really cares. What hold on, what's her name? Who is it? Who can think of it? No, hold on. I can't think of it. I wanna I wanna see if we can do this. Uh, um old Nona. Is she on my list of N- Nona? smoke shows? Is Nona? No. no that's not, Winona. Yeah, Winona. Nora. It's Nora. Nora. She yeah. is on my list of smoke shows. Well done. Well done. Oh yeah. Very first day she met, you're like, Yeah, you wanna like see my room <laughs> or something like that. Like <laughs> She's like, no, just try to tell you class is starting. <laughs> she walked up and was like, oh, I live next door. And I was like, co-ed dorms, nice. But so. Yes, uh, so Milo shouts out, who's there? And you hear back. Boys, I'm just ca- coming to make sure that you are all okay. And you recognize that it is the voice of Dean Tyson. I, uh, I open the door up. Just to crack. To confirm it's him? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, so I picture like a hotel room where there's like the chain lock on it too. I open it up and it's like chain locked so we could look and see. It it goes to the full extent of the chain lock. And then I see it's him and I, I can, we can confirm. I mean, it, it sounds like him. It looks like him. It's him. Everybody, like, what color are his eyes? eyes? It sounds like him. It looks like him. Okay, good. What color are his eyes? I, I, I allowed the door to open. Why do you know what his eyes are? <laughs> because he was just face to face with him when he was pretending to be a doctor. He was staring at him very closely. Apparently <laughs> staring into his eyes. Uh, they're brown eyes. Not black. Nope. Okay, we're good. All right. <laughs> I would like to close the door, undo the chain lock, open the door fully. Yeah, think, uh, more or less we're okay. Uh... You see me trying to, like, re-tip the bed over, but that's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah, uh... Quick, if it's really you, who broke the flower vase? <laughs> <laughs> that is still up for some debate. You claim it was Professor Kane, but I still don't see how that is feasible. Guys, this could be actually him. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you uh, checking, checking in on us. Yeah, we're doing all right right now. Did... Anything else come up last night? Was there any anything else that you guys were able to figure out or more people getting healed? Every, like, how's everything going? Well, I wanted to let you know that we are currently sending someone down to take a look at that secret lab that you say b- is below the inn. And we will, of course, have a report on that. I don't know that we will necessarily share that information with you. But you will hear the results of the full investigation. As for Professor Kane, he will continue teaching, but he has been placed under supervision. And I would highly suggest that none of you young men spend any time alone with him. He will be supervised in class, and any office hours will also be supervised. Uh, But for today, while the students in the infirmary continue to recover... You have a free study day. I highly suggest that you take this time to recover, to study, and 
to stay out of trouble. I appreciate it. Uh, did you... You said you said people are going to be checking on the uh, the secret lab area. Uh, I'm not sure if you know where to look. You said beneath the inn, correct? Right, but in order to access it, I had to uh, kind of make a make a magical hole in the wall to walk through, so it's not like easily able to be found. Do you want us to just show you? Uh, at least. You know, I, I understand if you don't want to share all the details of, like, where things are at at times, but at least, you know, confirm once you guys have been able to, like, find it. And if not, you know, I'm out. Even if this is something you'd like to see for yourself, we, like, I'm happy to take you there right now. Why don't you give me a persuasion roll? You know, for my character that, I don't know why, in the recent episodes I've been doing a lot of talking from my fucking awkward self, I have, like, no charisma or, like, <laughs> anything. Like, so awkward. It's because you're talking to figures of authority, which you have a working relationship with. Yeah, so I rolled a... Obsessive relationship with. A brown-nosing relationship with. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Brown trunking. Brown trunking him, huh? <laughs> uh, so I get plus zero, so that's a 16. So after your spiel, your, your plea to be involved... Dean Tyson scratches his uh, dragonborn scales and puts his thumb and forefinger against his chin and nods slowly and says, Very well. I suppose if you gentlemen are ready, I can take you to the inn right now and we can make sure that we have access to this secret lab that you are talking about. I pull out from my pocket my inspector hat, my corncob pipe, and a magnifying (laughs) glass. I'm ready. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Cool. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Milo's ready. Well, he looks ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I look around. Uh, Dixon, Thad, you guys. Uh, you guys, ready to go? I throw on my Pax Penny and strap up. Make yeah. sure you have enough ammo. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, and make sure I have enough ammo. <laughs> Smart. Yes. Good. Thanks for reminding Milo. Milo. Uh, <laughs> I, good job. Didn't do it to believe. No, great. Good job putting on, you know, the the hat and the, you know, you know, whatever. But you still haven't put your pants on yet. <laughs> One does not need pants, do they, Manny? I mean, it is the mind that matters, is it not? I mean, that's that's fine. I I just I'm trying to save you a little bit of you know embarrassment walking around <laughs> in, in your boxers. But you're also displaying brain while you're displaying your brain. Exactly. That's indeed. That's what I'm afraid of. I, I just I'm, double the brain, double the power, Mister Manny. I guess. I okay. I mean, if you're not gonna put on pants, it's we could have pants at a time like this. Oh, <laughs> I'm, pants at a time like this. I'm sorry, Mister McQuaid. Does it make you uncomfortable if I am not wearing pants? We just put some fucking pants on. I, <laughs> I will I put on. I find pants. it out. I have to ask twice. Oh. I come out. Fully dressed like an inspector now. Cool. Yeah, and I just, I grab my pack, um, my backpack of wondrous things. I throw in uh, some of my, you know, vials and shit around the room. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. Indeed. I wanna run. Dixon, you good? You, you got your hand axes, uh, your, your great axes, whatever axes you have. I have. Two hand axes, a crossbow I never use, daggers, and a long sword. Yeah, well. <laughs> and then I also have another long sword. You should just, you should really commit to the the axe thing, guy. You you swung good with it this morning with those hand axes. I think you should get a great axe. I think, you know, maybe go back to, you know, high school, grab some, like, axe body spray, you know, just everything axe related. <laughs> Manny? He also has horns. I don't have horns. You horn. Yeah. You are the horns. worst fucking detective. <laughs> Be like, he's horny. Uh, wait, no, he has horns. Wait, you're I'm not a dragonborn? I'm a dragonborn. Yeah, you're got horn. Paul, do I have horns? It's up to you if you have horns or not. Where's that fucking... They at least got spiky horns. Have you ever described yourself as having horns? Do you want to have horns? I, was, I thought this was like, you know, he's dressed up as an inspector, but everything he says is just completely fucking wrong. Like, every observation's completely backwards. I mean, so far... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have horns, then yeah, it's it's proven oh, to be that way. According to the official Death Saving Bros podcast fan art, I have horns. All right, somebody mm-hmm. tr- somebody draw him without horns next, um, <laughs> <laughs> just so we could reopen the debate. 
Indubitably. <laughs> Gosh. All right, all right, all right. We're ready. So let's uh, let's go. Horns. <laughs> Okay, so Dean Tyson winds up taking you down through the arc shine and leads you across campus, which is still quiet. As he had mentioned, there are cures going out to the students based on Dean Livia's ass- assessment, but they are under further observation and will not be well for another few days. And as you're walking into the arc shine town, he winds up saying, and because... The students won't be ready to return to classes for a few days yet. Coach Rolta has once again insisted that I let you two, uh, Manny and Thad, assemble a team for the upcoming Pyrocross game. However, clearly your teammates will not be ready for the game next week, so I would assume you would need to gather whomever you can that is currently available. Oh, our teammates are ready, right, teammates? <laughs> oh, I cannot play Pyrocross. The last time I dabbled in that affair, I was mistaken for the ball, you see. Yeah, but what if uh, <laughs> what if I told you you just get to steal the ball from uh, the other team? Oh, I already have a Pyrocross ball, you see. Yeah, but... You could have another one. Have you thought of that? Yes, yes, I have, you see. If I have. I, I, think, I think you'll be fine. We just... I mean, even just so we don't forfeit. <laughs> and Dixon, you should definitely join because it's very likely you will get injured and harmed. <laughs> <laughs> the sport is uh, very cutthroat, if you know what I'm saying. Cut wrist, even. Did somebody say cutting? <laughs> yeah, you could cut through the defense, potentially. Well, sorry, I'm still not convinced. Are knives able, or are knives allowed on the yeah, field? Yeah, yeah. So, hmm. uh, no. By no, he <laughs> means yes. Um, oh, no, same I mean, thing with Milo. No. We will... Uh, <laughs> They're just being silly. Yeah. Dad, we'll have to... <laughs> may have to drag him <laughs> to, the, to the field and just throw him on the pitch, but <laughs> we'll, we'll be all right. Well, if these are, in fact, your chosen teammates and they agree, then considering that things seem to be looking up for the Arkshine campus... We will be playing our first match of the Pyrocross season. So I, I I wish the two of you captains good luck. It seems that Coach Rolta has officially won me over. Uh, thanks to you, because apparently you have helped to unearth this uh, malfeasance that Professor Kane may have caused. I look into Dean Tyson's eyes and I openly weep tears of joy. <laughs> and I hug him. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> my my goodness uh, this this is uh, quite unexpected and uh, perhaps a little <laughs> improper and he's he softly pushes against your shoulders to get you to release him from your embrace i hug him tighter <laughs> oh thank oh. you so much dad dad hey come on come on not not right now it's, it's the happiest day of my life i know but it's a good thing it's a good thing yeah it's it's good we'll we'll be able to play uh and just release, <laughs> release Tyson. <laughs> I give him one more squeeze and I let go. Your vertebrae pop. All right, all right. So thank, thank you, Thad. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you, you are happy. Well, anyways, here we are at the inn, the scene of the crime that you claim was committed. He pushes open the door, and inside you can see some of the other faculty members that you've met over your years, and they seem to be doing detective work. They're brushing things down and they're inspecting things with magnifying glasses and they're casting detect magic and various spells to kind of see what was happening. And Dean Tyson says, all right, all right. Well, Manny, you said that you could lead us to this secret lab. Perhaps you should do that now. (laughs) Well, Manny was the only one who didn't come up this way. (laughs) What? Yeah, you went... You went out the way we came in, and the rest of us... Went through the window. We came up into the inn. Right. Through the From secret the passageway. Attic. Yeah, well, that's not... I was there. Yeah, well, there's definitely an entrance from the basement. <laughs> it's in the keg room. But, yeah, Thad, if, <laughs> uh, if, if you know where to go from here... The keg room. Yeah, so, uh, Tyson, uh, D, 
Teen Titan. Um, there, there, there's an entrance to the lair from the basement. Uh, but there also is another entry point, uh, here, which, which we can definitely show you from the bar. So we go to the keg room, right? <laughs> right, guys? Yeah. Also, where is Where's the, the owner? Bartenders. Yeah, because they fucked us up a little bit. And not in the fun way we usually come here for. Wow. <laughs> but, um, I, I'm going to pretend that you didn't say that, but between you and me, I also come here to get fucked up. <laughs> I mean, it's a bar. <laughs> like, I, I didn't think Everybody that was... Everybody low bones. <laughs> <laughs> we come here to sing Kumbaya on the weekends. Yes, yes. Mm, mm, mm. I am your teacher. Uh, <laughs> not saying that I haven't had a hurricane or two here. <laughs> That's highly improper. <laughs> How peculiar. <laughs> Indeed. Watson, write that down. Anywho, uh, to answer your question, we have just begun our investigation. It is only 8 a.m. after all. Um, our faculty members just got here, and we have not yet discovered any evidence of the owners of this establishment, Margaret and Mabel. Uh, but we are only on the first floor. We haven't even begun in the keg room, as you have said, there is an entrance, so perhaps lead us there. Okay, well, if you see, Mabel's the one that had the whack eyes, right? They were both pretty whack, yo. Yeah, but one of them had, like, black eyes that was putting people to sleep. Uh, Dean, if you see the one called Mabel, uh, lop her head off before you look at her, just out of safety. <laughs> well, there are plenty of us here, very skilled, very skilled adventurers. I'm sure that we can handle our own, but duly noted. Yeah, at the neck. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, please, lead the way so that we may see this secret lab and you gentlemen can get back to your studies. We lead... So you guys lead them to the back of the bar where there is an open door that leads down into the keg room. And then beyond the keg room, there is a shelf leading to an open or rather a jar entryway into another staircase that leads down into the secret lab that you guys have discovered. And Dean Tyson says, well, this secret lab isn't very well hidden now, is it? Well, that's because I kicked the shit out of the way. Wait, is there anything different about the room now that we remember it from when we were there? And one thing particularly is, is that crazy writing still written on there from where I got the helmet? So, good question, Milo. I would like you to give me an investigation check or perception, whichever one is going to be better for you, and you can do it with advantage. Because you not only know what to look for, but you have specifically asked about it. Is it because he's wearing the investigation yeah. stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and because you're wearing the investigation stuff. All of the above, you you get to pick which one's better for you, and you have advantage. 26. Alright, so, Dean Tyson is making these comments as you're walking down, and as soon as you enter into the secret lab area, the table slash slab that Winona was on is still there. The rounded tables are still there, but they are cleared of all paraphernalia, mainly because Milo already cleared them. God, don't worry about it. And the braziers that are around the exterior of the room, where there were flames, those have been extinguished. However, as soon as you get down there, um, Dean Tyson snaps his fingers, calls a ball of light that illuminates the room. And you can see immediately, Milo, that the words that were written on the floor of this lab have been scratched away. Are there notice like is it noticeably like they're scratched up and you can see that it's been cleared? It yeah. Or is it just like they never existed? Originally what was written on the floor was runes carved into stone. And now what has happened is those runes have been worn down as if over many, many centuries. So like when you enter an old church and you can barely read the engravings on the old tombstones, it's like that. So the words don't even exist anymore. I see. Well, I do see one thing here, um, is that there were extra 
writings carved into the floor here, and I don't know how skilled your adventurers here are, but uh, perhaps if we could reverse the time of these stones, we could see. <laughs> if I could turn back time. Oh, question. So at ninth level, a blood hunter gets uh, grim psychomet- psychometry? Psychometry. Psychometry. You gain a supernatural talent for discerning the secrets surrounding mysterious relics or places touched by evil. Whenever you make an intelligence slash history... Seems so useful. <laughs> yeah. Check to recall information... So my name is evil. ...about the sinister or tragic history of an object you are touching or your current location. You have advantage on the check. At the DM's discretion, which is why I'm asking you, a suitably high roll might cause your character to experience brief visions of the past connected to the object or locations. Dude, I am so fucking psyched by this. Yes, you can try and use this. <laughs> He's been waiting for you to try this part. <laughs> well, it's at ninth level, so I literally just fucking got it. Yeah, I, I guess that wasn't specifically said at the beginning of this episode, but you guys did level up to level nine, so... Yeah, why don't you go ahead and see if you can uh, recall any information about a potentially sinister or tragic object. I will do so. Because I would imagine that this is tragic and also evil. Fuck me in the dick. (laughs) Well, so you do also have advantage on the check, apparently, because you're going to be touching it. I do. Woo, thank God we got that advantage, huh? Maddie won, huh? Two. (laughs) Not great, bub. History is intelligence. Ooh. So plus eight. So we're fine. We're at 25. Wow. You, you're proficient in history? <laughs> oh, you I'm sorry. Now. I was looking at the wrong. I was looking at intelligence by itself. No, I'm not proficient in history. So subtract four. So 21. That's still a solid roll. Yeah, I'm a nerd. I like to cut myself. Get over it. And occasionally I see visions of the past about evil things. <laughs> and I love making muffins in my spare time. Yeah. I like seeing dead people. What of it? So I'm essentially what I'm envisioning is Milo has just put his pipe in his mouth and puff, puff, puff. Dean Tyson, what if you could turn back time on these stones? And Dean Tyson looks at Milo and says, Milo, please, we, we can't do that. Besides, anyways, we can barely even tell what would have been written here beforehand. The stones are so worn away, and he's explaining all this. He's mansplaining to you guys about why they have nothing to go on, and there's nothing that they could do. And Dixon just rolls up his sleeves, takes a knee, and just puts his hand down with all sorts of uh, righteousness just to make a show of it because he doesn't really give a shit. And he doesn't give a shit, so he's going the extra mile. <laughs> as soon as you touch the stone and start looking along the edge of where the writing was, you start experiencing these visions. You can see flashes of emotions. You can feel pain. You see the slashing of a knife, the spurting of blood, and then the dead eyes of Margaret. Next, you see Winona on the slab in front of you and she is getting injected with a purple goo from a large syringe. You can see three women chanting and they look hideous. And they ugly. (laughs) (laughs) Some ratchet ass hoes. (laughs) Some trifling bitches. And you can see Golden Aura being pulled away from Winona into the words on the floor and suddenly you snap back into focus in the room and Dean Tyson is finishing up saying and clearly that is why we have nothing to go on here there's nothing left I don't say a word (laughs) this again (laughs) motherfucker I'm kidding I say a word flashback I was gonna say which word (laughs) duh yeah so um guys um do I know what the ground said? Like, was I able to read what the runes were? Milo was able to read them because he had that helmet. That helmet. I don't recall if Milo said what it said to everybody else. Oh, shoot. I just repeat what they said. Why are we even doing this? Well, yeah, that or I guess you could. 
Like, if you got a glimpse of them in the flashback, you could right. draw them and have him reread them. Like, either sort way, of deal. Either way, we need Paul to just tell us, because I forgot. You don't have them in your notes? It's not on the whiteboard, man. Runes on the ground, smash or pass. <laughs> <laughs> I will drill them out one way or another. Um... We'll say where there were runes on the ground, there was three witches. I'm assuming that there were witches. Margaret's dead. Oh, fantastic. She scared me. Yeah, I saw her dead eyes specifically. Saw her dead eyes dead, or you just saw her dead eyes alive? I mean, she had dead eyes regardless. No, that was Mabel. What are you talking about? Shh. I can see the past. What? Since when? This morning. Dean Tyson says, What? Since this boy, it just randomly happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so you said that you saw the runes? Like I in saw your... everything. I pull out a paintbrush. Can you draw what they were? Can I draw what they were? You didn't see the runes, like the entirety of the runes in your images. Okay. You just saw that the floor where the runes were, were glowing. lighting up. As the golden aura was being drawn away from Winona. I got you. In that case, Paul, level with me. Do I remember? I had the helmet on, so they were translated or whatever. Do I at least remember what the translation said via, like, the general gist of it? Yes, you do. You remember that the words written on the floor were binded to the earth within this circle, tied to the user through magic. Essence of life, essence of weave, power complete. So I don't remember exactly what the runes looked like, but they, uh, I, I had a way to translate them, and this is what they said. Dean Tyson starts to stroke his chin. Interesting. Interesting. So it gets worse. So that's what they said. They were glowing gold and the three um, rough-looking witches. <laughs> They were chanting and casting magic on our fellow classmate Winona on this here table. Gold aura was flowing out of her, out of the runes, onto the floor. Rough time. And yeah, you know, something like, you know, she may or may not have been injected with something. Injected with something? Or being pulled out of her. Ah, it sounds like the exact same golden weave that our, uh... Our friend in the psych ward saw when all of his friends were executed. Hold on. Injected with something. Injected with what? Injected with a substance. Can you describe it? I know what color it was, fuck. Say it, damn it. Say it was the purple liquid. (laughs) It was green. You colorblind motherfucker. <laughs> oh, well, I said I could see the past. I didn't say I could see the colors. Unfortunately, I don't have any syringes full of green liquid on me. What about purple? I do have a syringe full of purple liquid, though. Well, it definitely wasn't that one. You pull it out, you're like, yeah, that's green. <laughs> <laughs> can I, Milo, can I see the purple syringe? Ah, oh, yes, the syringe in which is for injecting. Let me grab that. And I pull it out and I uh, show it to you and I say, here it is now. This is what I had uh, found. You're right. Definitely not green. Um, that's what they put in her. Ah, this was the color. We will have to go over the basic colors with our buddy here, but this is exactly what was seen to do the... Th- Milo, where did you pick that up at again? Where where did mm-hmm. you even get that? Ah, from- Are you the one injecting people? No, no, not at all. This was... <laughs> Suspicious. This was on the uh, medical carts when we were attacked by those gray oozes. So you found it in the infirmary, and, uh, you know, the same sort of medicine that Dean Livia distributes somewhere. How close was that medical cart to Anona's room? It's the same medical cart that our buddy Manny here flipped over and then used to heat to try to hurt the ooze. You were taking a shit. (laughs) I don't remember this. Yes, but to answer Dixon's question, uh, Leong's room was not near Winona's room. But regardless, guys, this is the same liquid in the syringes that, I mean, we obviously found within the infirmary, too, which, you know, we could use that information somehow, maybe. We must take this to the laboratory at once. Well, Tyson... And determine its components. We're in the laboratory. Yeah, we're (laughs) literally in the lab. Regardless, so, Dixon, good job. 
don't you talk to me like I'm a child. Also, there's more hallways that way. Yeah, there's there's still a lot here too. Because I I so obviously that was a lot of information to unpack, but you know it seems to align with you know what what we had seen when we first entered entered the room. Um, but yeah, that's a good call because I want to also you know Tyson will definitely unpack that information, but I also want to show you like the other hallways and the other entrance that you know leads in from the basement and stuff. So. Well, I guess, you know, take a step back. Do you know what this... I have, I have so many questions. <laughs> I was gonna say, slow down a second. We are given the information for what the runes say. Do you guys have any response? Is your question about me being able to see the past? I have questions about that. I have questions about, you know, what kind of liquid is this being used and seen? Um, yeah, because, you know, putting, putting it together, trying to piece together the information, that was also, you know, during the time. So we found... Milo took the purple liquid off the the cart from the infirmary. We saw you said you saw Winona was strapped to the table, and this is also where we found Winona at and being injected with that purple liquid. And at the same time, the medical chart in the infirmary says that Winona was in her room at the time, but when we checked her room, she wasn't there. And it's the same liquid from the infirmary that she was being injected in when she was actually trapped here, but supposed to be in the infirmary room. <sighs> Welcome to Sunday. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like you need to get Holy some sleep, man. Holy shit, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Tyson chimes in and says, Okay, so let me see if I'm getting this straight. You saw in the past, somehow, that there was a purple liquid being injected into your classmate Winona by three witches. Yes. And that same purple liquid Milo has on him, which you found... In the infirmary, next to some gray oozes by your friend Liang? Yeah, don't worry about it. No, you're following. Okay. And you also said that there was gray aura coming out of Winona into the runes. Golden. And you say that Margaret, the owner of this inn, is dead. As far as I know, I saw her dead eyes. Okay. What do you mean, dead eyes? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Source, <laughs> trust me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I think I'm going to need... And uh, you with the hallways, yes, I can clearly see there's a hallway over there. <laughs> <sighs> Thank goodness. Um, I think I'm going to need to ask you boys to leave while we do a little bit more investigation, and I will need to investigate that syringe. Hmm. Milo. I'm, okay, so here's what we're going to do. I will reluctantly hand over the syringe. I know you're going to try to convince me of that. Yes. I would also like to have Toby become, like, a very tiny thing and just follow this investigation. Okay, well, I'm going to hold off on that because as you're handing over the syringe, you hear footsteps on the stairs that you had just come down from the inn. And one of the faculty members, she's breathless and her hair's coming out of her bun. And she says, Dean Tyson, you need to come look at this. He looks back at you four and says, is there any chance that if I say stay, you'll actually stay? No. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. We're come coming along. with you. If Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And he leads you back upstairs, and the faculty member, she takes you up to the second floor. And here is where uh, Milo and Thad remember getting Dixon out of the one bedroom. You guys did not look in any of the other bedrooms. In one of the first bedrooms, the door is ajar, and you can smell the most horrid stench that you have encountered in probably your lives. Ah, oh, there's a dead body. That's Stank. Good. My character has keen smell, so I smell it even worse than you guys. As the faculty member puts a handkerchief over her nose, she pushes open the door, and inside you can see the desiccated and decaying body of Margaret. My breakfast is on the floor. And that is where we're going to end our episode. I'd like to also long rest because uh, <laughs> I want to sleep next to the body. Uh, yeah, I cuddle up and get a blanket because God gee. <laughs> like I the, faint at the sight of the body and they just stay there for eight hours. <laughs> like the long rest, I'd like to you know do all my 
other shit that I wanted <laughs> to do that I never got a chance to yet. Um, why are you ending it here, Paul? We're actually making good progress for once. I feel like time. <laughs> yep, we're uh, we're up on our hour long episode, so it's a good cliffhanger, and we will deal with the fallout of finding a dead body next time on the Death Saving Bros podcast. We got a big old loaded cannon for the next episode to just spring forward through. Got a load plot. to blow. <laughs> Quit got to blow your load. All over it's going to be time to giddy up. Oh, That's right. Yeah. yeah, he's got the joke. Finally, <laughs> took him an hour. No. To all those of you who are out there listening, thank you for being here with us. We hope that you are enjoying the story and are intrigued by the new revelations that we have discovered. If you would like to hear even more of our show, we have bloopers, recaps, and extra episodes, like we mentioned at the beginning of this episode, on Patreon at patreon.com slash deathsavingbros. You can also become a Shade Arrow member, where you'll be able to get physical rewards for being a continuing supporter. If you would like to keep in touch with us, we are available on social media at Death Saving Bros. I am personally available at HP Camper. You can find me at Benfro15. You can find me at Ima underscore B underscore Rad. Is that a question? Always. Oh, okay. You can follow the Reddit. You can find me hiding. Yeah, you can find me hiding. Under the rug. <laughs> <laughs> Under your bed. You can find me on the PlayStation Network as F-A-T-T dash Smith. And to all those of you who are listening, in your cars, in your homes, or wherever you may be, keep saving those death throws, and we'll see you on the next one. This episode was made possible by our patrons. The following individuals have pledged at the $5 tier. Tad Corsi. Thank you for your support. Some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material. The song, The Dangerous Dole Olivia, is by Ivan Duke. This track is used with permission. All rights reserved.